Okay, so I've had some questions about Descartes' rule of signs and that writing about polynomials assignment. Uh, so all that assignment asks you to do is talk about Descartes' rule of signs and what it tells us. You don't have to find all the zeros and all that. So um, to help you with the Descartes' rule of signs uh, idea, and this might help you give you a model of how to write that assignment, um, what I decided to do is I tried, decided to game, game, the, game the system and I created a polynomial that has one, one negative zero, right? Because where does x plus one equal zero? Is it negative one? And this is a positive zero when x equals two. And then this is, an, this is a complex zero because that would be, if we try to solve that for zero, we'd get the plus or minus the square root of negative one. So this polynomial has one negative, one positive, and two complex. So how does that work in Descartes' rule of signs is the question we're trying to answer. So I went through and I foiled those and I multiplied that through and that so I expanded this polynomial to that. And then so this is what we're gonna see in Descartes with Descartes' rule of signs. We'll give you something like that and then we're gonna count. So Descartes' rule of signs says, hey, take a look at the right, real for the original function, count the number of sign changes, I see one sign change. It goes from a positive to a negative, and then it stays negative. So one sign change. So that tells me there's two positive, or I'm sorry, one positive root, and won't be any any complex roots. I mean, at least not in this, because they have to come in in, in conjugate pairs, and there's supposed to be four zeros here. So if something's up. There's probably one positive root. Hint, hint, hint. We kind of already knew that up there. Okay. Um, so then. What happens for the next part of Descartes' rule of signs is, so then you evaluate it for x equals negative one, negative x. And, and I substituted in negative x every place I saw an x. I replaced it with negative x. Then I said, you know, then I evaluated it. Well, a negative number to the fourth power is positive. A negative number to the third power is negative. So that changed that sign there from a positive to a negative. And that, again, that squared, so that stays, becomes positive, that, that negative doesn't change. But a negative, negative turns positive, and then, of course, that constant doesn't change. So now I'm seeing a positive to a negative, it's a negative, a negative to a positive, and it changes back, so three sign changes. So then, what does that do for us? Well, because we know Descartes' rule of signs tells us since I started out with three negative roots and I probably already have a positive root, they can't be any complex roots. But then this decreases by two and this increases by two. So there could be one negative root and two complex roots. And of course, like I said, we already gamed the system so that there's one positive root, one negative root, and then that there's two complex roots. So you just see how Descartes' rule of signs helped us to, helped us to figure that out. That would allow us to maybe to, when doing synthetic division, to do a, you know, to, to uh, save ourselves some steps. Of course, as I sh if you watch that other video about finding the zeros, you know, if we just graph it and do it that way, that's another way to do it, right? Um, but it does support it. And in calculus, you'll see there's a lot of theorems in calculus, and we use those uh, very beneficial for theorems, not archaic ones like Descartes' rule of signs. Okay, but still, it's the same kind of thing. It'll help you get you ready for calc that. Anyway, okay, so now, what can you do to get some more practice with it? Well, if you come over here to, um, to, to this is on page 215 of that Demana textbook, we could do some of these. Um, why don't I not do the odd questions? Why don't I do a couple of the even questions because you don't have those answers? and give you some, talk it through a little bit. Um, if you want, why don't you stop the video and why don't you try number, why don't you try number 22 and see what you can come up with and then come back and watch this and, and listen and see what I'm doing with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and solve it now. I see one, two sign changes. So that tells me there could be two positive and because it's the third power, I can't have a complex, right? Because so zero complex must be, this end. it could be a negative root. So zero complex. Or this could decrease by two. So there could be one positive and two complex zeros. All 
all right? Because we know, we know cubic equations look something like this, right? So it could be that it crosses the x-axis twice and then at the, on a positive side, the positive x side and must be crossed at the negative x side, or it could cross at once with two complex zeros. So now let's do the f of negative x. So f of negative x, well, I'm gonna, here, you know, I'll write it all out. Um, my Oxbow pre-calc students are telling me to show more work than confusing them, so. I'll wean them, I'll wean them shortly. They, they won't need it soon, but um, since I don't see you as guys as much, I'm gonna do it this way. So negative number to the third power is negative. Uh, squared stays, keeps it positive, so that doesn't change. This becomes negative, that's plus one. So I'm seeing only one sign change. So that tells me there's gotta be one negative zero, and then one negative root, and zero complex if that's the case. So it looks to me like this first option is probably what's gonna happen. Um, just out of curiosity, here, give me a second. So I went out to Desmos and graphed that function, and lo and behold, what are we seeing? We're seeing one negative and two, two positive real roots, and it's the third degree, so there aren't any complex roots. So that's pretty cool. That, I gotta admit, that is pretty cool. Um, tell you what, I'll go to the next page and I'll do, I'll do number 24, and then this is probably a long enough video. Okay, so what are we seeing? If you want, why don't you try this and uh, stop the video, try it, and then come on back and see if we agree. Uh, so let's see, I'm seeing one, two, three sign changes. That tells me there could be three positive roots, and because it's to the fourth power, they would that that wouldn't leave any zeros left for complex roots. So this can decrease by two. Ah, so it could be decreased by two, so that'd be one. Three minus two is one. So there could be one positive and two complex, and that would still leave space for one negative zero or, or one negative root because it's the fourth power. Okay, so now let's do f of negative x. So that's gonna be negative x to the fourth power minus two times, did I copy that right? I did. Um, two negative x squared plus three times negative x minus four. So that's x to the fourth. And negative number squared is still it becomes positive, so that still says negative two x. But that three turns to th negative three x, and that negative four stays. So I see one sign change. So that tells me that tells me uh, there's going to be. Uh, can I move this whole mess up? Just a minute here. Come on, there we go. That tells me there's only going to be one negative root. So if that's the case. I think what's going to happen is one negative root, one positive root, and two complex, very similar to that, uh, that problem I made up. Um, and let me go out to Desmos, graph it, and we'll check it out. And well, lo and behold, look at this. One positive, right? One positive root, one negative root, and fundamental theorem of algebra tells us it's got to be four zeros, so that tells me there's going to be two complex. So that's just, that's just very cool that it was late. we were able to figure that out without too much work. It's not always this clean cut, folks. So, I mean, sometimes it's, you don't know what it could be until you f start finding them. But, so for that assignment, for that writing polynomials assignment, if you want, you can create your own polynomial, game it for, the, you know, put in the, the number of roots you want, and then show how Descartes' rule of signs predicts it. And, and you don't have to do the graphing. That's not what that is asking you to do. And you know what, you don't have to do any synthetic division or anything. They aren't asking you to do that. Just to want, they're just asking you to explain how Descartes' rule of signs can be used to uh, predict the number of, uh, of zeros, number of real zeros, number of complex zeros. Okay, I'll stop this video and get it online.